Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We turn the pulpit over to Sister Smith and the Holy Ghost and ask her to minister tonight. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Brother and Sister McGinnis, for having me. I hope I said the name right. Okay. God bless you all. It is good to be here. I do have a message, and I do believe it is a word from God. It's something I haven't done in a while, and I don't like repeating things. But it's something that I feel the Lord wants done. I'm going to start with Psalms 91. And we're going to read the whole chapter. And then I'm going to teach about the mind tonight, because the mind is a place where we either lose it with God or we get it. Yeah. And I'm going to, at the end, we're going to pray a prayer. And it's going to be very serious, but it's going to prepare you for Brother uh, Winslow coming, because we're going to get everything out of the way so that when he walks in, the way he operates with miracles and signs and wonders, it'll just be ready. For him to do it. Amen. And that's the way it should be. Somebody should pave the way so that when he walks through the door, it just happens. Yes, it just amen. does it. So we'll go to Psalms chapter 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. And let me pause here just a minute. What the Lord did for me one time was he had me read this before I preached. And it was in a church where the pastor had been very sick and doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong. Well, after that service, I, I inserted his name everywhere it was appropriate. So as I read this, I want you to insert your name everywhere it's appropriate. Because we shouldn't be living under any shadows, under any clouds. Right. We should be living gloriously. We should not be living in nightmares. We should be living free. We should be living victorious. Okay? Yes. So think about this chapter. It says, Surely he shall deliver thee, or Susie, from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee, or you, with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. The question tonight is, do we believe this? Do we really believe this passage? It says, only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Pastor, if you would pray. Lord Jesus, we ask, God, that you would anoint our minds, God, that we would receive the word tonight, God. Prepare us, God. Prepare us tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. I gave a little of my testimony last night. I'll do that real quick before we get into this, and then I'm going to move real fast because I know what Wednesday nights are like. They're not like when I was growing up. You stayed in church till they got done. Now everybody wants to get home and get the kids to bed. Somehow I managed to graduate from high school with a little sleep. <laughs> Somehow. Sleeping under fuse. But that's not the way we do things today. I'm here to shake you. I'm here to say it's time for us to maybe let some kids sleep on the pews. To maybe, you know, they have to do their homework as soon as they get home from school instead of doing it after church. You know, which is your excuse to go home. Because you've got to rush out. You can't linger in the presence of God. And that's free. That wasn't in my notes, okay? That's Amen. just free. It's time for the church to make church a priority. Yes. Amen. It's time for us to change the things that are important to us. Right. Amen. God should be the one important. Yes. yes. Amen. So the Psalms 91, the reason I read it first, it really doesn't even go with the message, but God, when, when the Holy Ghost swept in here last night in the prayer meeting, God spoke to me and said, you need to open with that. So that's why I opened with it, because I want you to know focused prayers are very important. Yes. And if you have a child who's having nightmares, my cousin, who's a brethren, uh, 
layperson called me and her granddaughter was having nightmares and she goes, Susie, you have miracles when you preach. Things happen when you preach. What should I do because my granddaughter's having these nightmares? And I said, well, I'd read Psalms 91. I'd pray it over. I'd put her name about, you know, terrors by night. That's what that is. And you say in Jesus' name and it has no place in her world anymore. Right. It will not happen anymore. And as these words were flowing out of my mouth, I'm thinking, whoa, Okay, God, you better come through. But you know what? She called me back a few weeks later. And she said, you know what, Susie? She hadn't had any more nightmares. Because it stopped. Because you see, she believed the word of God. And when we truly believe the word of God, the word will not return void. Amen. It will accomplish right. what it is supposed to accomplish. Amen. But you see, we have to believe it. There's a difference. Yeah. So in our minds is where we have the problem. You see... We're marching to hell when we refuse to protect our minds. Yeah. Those are strong words, but they're true words. You see, Mark 13, 32 through 37, and I'm not going to read that. It talks about where nobody knows the time Jesus is coming back. And we're supposed to watch. We're supposed to keep our eyes open and alert. That means we need to keep our minds open and alert to God, not open and alert to the devil. See, we open up to everything but God, seemingly. And double-mindedness, James 1 and 8, is the first point. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Right. You can't serve God and the devil. If you're constantly with the TV or the Internet instead of in your Bibles and praying, i got news for you. You're double-minded. You're not balanced. It's time for the church to be balanced. If we're going to see these things happen, we have to be balanced. Then we have to understand about cleansing our minds. James 4, 7, and 8. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But it says, submit yourselves to God. We like the last half, but we don't quote that first half, does it? We say, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Well, hey, you forgot something. You got to submit to God first. Right. You're not submitting to God. The devil ain't going nowhere. Right. I don't care how much you resist. He's going to be your bosom buddy until you learn how to submit to God. Yes. So we've walked away from some principles. And then verse 8 says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. It's time for us to understand that we've got to cleanse some things. We've got to sanctify some yes. things. In the Old Testament, when you read over and over again, it talks about sanctification. It talks about purification. It talks about the anointing, how important the anointing was. And I've, I've written one book on the anointing, and I've got two more about ready to come out. But it, we've got to understand that sometimes we, we don't just need to flow in the anointing. We've got to know how to protect the anointing. Yes. And sometimes we have to fight for the anointing. Oh, but if we don't know how to protect our minds, we won't be able to fight anything off. Because we will bow under pressure. Because we haven't had that consistent walk with our king. Right. Which is what changes us. Amen. So let me go on about the mind. Joshua 3 and 5, he even said, Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. That's why the Lord has ordered my footsteps here and me to meet you last week, because you had Brother Winslow coming. Wonders are going to happen when he comes. I truly believe that. But what we've got to do, I'm here to prepare you in advance so that they can happen, because you've got to be cleansed and purified. Just because you're full of the Holy Ghost and you look good, we can all look real good. Yeah, that's right. We all look real good. Yeah. But what are we like inside? Right. Who do we resemble inside? Right. You know, what, when you stand in front of the mirror, are you resembling Jesus or are you resembling the devil incarnate, Come as on. my mother would say? Mm -hmm. You know, seriously, we, we need to resemble Jesus in everything that we do. Amen. It's got to become every piece of us. Yes. Yes. Then we've got to understand the mind's importance and its impact on our walk with God. 2 Corinthians 10. I'm going to read it in the complete Jewish Bible version. It says, Now it is I myself, Sheol, making an appeal to you with the meekness and forbearance that comes from the Messiah. I who am considered timid when face to face with you, but intimidating from a distance. This is the Apostle Paul. But I beg you not to force me to be intimidating when I am with you. In other words, he didn't like having to go and correct churches. He didn't like having to be, you know, the heavy. Like when I, when I worked... My husband stayed home and raised our kids. And I can just hear him now because he was the softy. Just wait till your mother gets home. <laughs> I can just hear him saying that. And the kids knew that when I walked in, it would happen. <laughs> if they hadn't gone to their lessons or if they hadn't done what they were supposed to do, that mom would take them to task. Is that not true in any household? 
Is that not the way a pastor does not want to have to be? And then everybody's posting all this stupid stuff on Facebook. Summertime comes and all of a sudden the Pentecostals lost their clothes. They lost their holiness. And our kids are taking dance classes. And I'm meddling and I know it. But I'm sorry. I was raised up that you didn't listen to any music but Christian. You didn't do any activities in school. I mean, you did nothing. You didn't. You certainly didn't go swimming. Actually, I didn't. I still can't swim. And it's not because I don't want to now. It's because I have, you know, water scares me. But it's time for us to go back to some of the old things. I'm not saying all that stuff that they wouldn't let us do was wrong. I'm just saying we've got to look at it differently. We've got to put it in perspective yes, so right. that it doesn't take control of us. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So Paul's saying... Don't make me be intimidated. And then he says, as I expect to be towards some who, who regard us as living in a worldly way. For although we do live in the world, we do not wage war in a worldly way. Because the weapons we use to wage war are not worldly. On the contrary, they have God's power for demolishing strongholds. We demolish arguments and every arrogance that raises itself up against the knowledge of God. We take every thought captive and make it obey the Messiah. Amen. Think about that. Those thoughts that go through your mind when somebody makes you mad yes, amen. and you're ready to rip into them a real good one mm -hmm. is really, is that what Jesus would do? Yes, I know he whipped the money changers out of the temple. That's only one instance. He was a very loving, gracious God 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. Let me go on. It says we demolish arguments and every arrogance. And we take every thought captive and make it obey the Messiah. Instead of our thoughts controlling us, what the apostle is saying, it's time for us to control our thoughts. Amen. Because it's in our thoughts that sin first takes place. It's in our thoughts that we struggle with the most. Right. It's in our thoughts that we don't believe that God can give us a miracle. It's in our thoughts that we think everyone is against us. It's in our thoughts that we think suicide is an answer to our problems. It's in our thoughts that depression overtakes us. So it's time for us to take control of our thoughts yes, in amen. Jesus' name yes. instead of allowing our thoughts yes. to control us. Right, amen. So let me go on. It says, and when you have become completely obedient, then we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience. Because if you take care of this, it'll take care of the rest. Right. And then we've got to renew our minds, Romans 12, 1 and 2. And I'm going to read it in the message version for time's sake. It says, so here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. That's what it says. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Here's the part. This is why I read it in the message versions because it's the next part. It says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well, Formed maturity in you. Yes. Amen. Think about your thoughts. Think about your mind. Yes. I think it's time. We, we breeze over everything in Pentecost. Because we don't want to admit to the problems we have in our, in our churches. And part of my ministry is picking up the rug and saying, oh, look, look at that. There's some drug addiction sitting here. Yeah. And it's leading us. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, there's depression. We got some kids cutting themselves. Some young people that think they're not worthy to even live because they're being bullied. But they're afraid to tell anybody because everybody looks perfect. Yeah, that's right. You see, it's time for us to say, hey, you're not perfect. Hey, I clean up real well. But I got a testimony. I took you to some stuff. The day the police came to my house to arrest my husband because he wanted us to think he had killed himself. Let me tell you, there's nothing like watching your loving husband put in handcuffs. And walked in front of you. And you have to stand there. And you have to say, he needs help. Life is not always perfect. Life is pretty, pretty bad sometimes. But what about your walk with God? Can you control your thoughts during a time like that? I remember following that ambulance to...
to the hospital. And I was weeping. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was so upset. I was like, my God, what do I do? How do we fix this? What do we do, God? It was drug addiction at its best, but it was prescribed drug addiction. I said, God, what do I do? How do I change this? And as I was sitting there, God quickened the name to my mind of a friend that I hadn't talked to in years. And I happened to have her number in my phone, so I called her. And it was near Christmas. They were having a party. I'll never forget it. And she said, oh, you need to talk to James. And she got him on the phone. One of our, a minister in our fellowship that's a licensed psychologist. And he got on the phone and he talked me off my cliff. And he told me what to do when I walked in that hospital. And he was available for me. But had I not had a relationship with God, had I not had that relationship Amen. with God and with the church, who would I have asked for help? Who would I have talked to in my midnight hour? You see, our thoughts have got to be captive for Jesus, not captive for the devil. And when we get our thoughts captive for God, it changes our outcomes. Amen. We have to have the mind of Christ. Amen. 1 Corinthians 2 and 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. I'm here to wake you up and ask you, do you have the mind of Christ? Do you have it today? Or has your Holy Ghost become so dormant in you that if the Lord sat down beside you, you wouldn't recognize him? I want to know he's here. Yes. I want to feel him in everything yes. I do, yes. everywhere I go, every day. Amen. I want to be renewed in the yes. spirit of my mind. Oh my Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 23 talks about it. It says, testify in the Lord. It says, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. You let the devil control your thoughts and you're blind in your heart right. to the things of God. Right. It's time for us to clear these things up and to move in the anointing and in the spirit of God. It says, yeah. being past filling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye haven't learned that of Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and being renewed in the spirit of your mind. It's time for our minds to be renewed. Yes. It's time for us to pray until our minds are renewed. Amen. Just because reality says you're going to die, just because it says you're having surgery in a week, and only one in four people survive that surgery, and you're not going to be those one in four, does not mean that you will not survive. Right. If we would believe the word of God, yes. we would see more miracles, yes. signs, and wonders. Yes. Yes. It's our fault. Yes. We're not seeing what right. God Amen. wants to show us. Because oh, we have allowed the devil to take captive our thoughts when Jesus should be the one who has our thoughts captive. Right. Amen. And then we need to have a sound mind, point seven. Second Timothy 1, 5 through 7. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in you also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yes, amen. Don't let the devil tell you you don't have a sound mind. It's promised to us in the Bible. I just read it to you. So it's time for the church to believe in the promises of God. We're promised a sound mind. We're not supposed to be operating under fear unless it's the fear of the Lord. And to fear God is to reverence God or to honor God. Yes. Amen. It's not talking about being scared of him. Right. He loves us. He would not do anything to us. Right. No. He's a gentleman. He wants us to succeed. He wants to see us do great things for him. But because Amen. we've gotten things all mixed up because of our priorities, we're here, there, and there, and yawn and scattered. It's just like the past week. I've been working on stuff with Brother Johnson. And for me to get up every morning, I ask the Lord. It's been a while, and I ask God to start waking me up again. Well, 4.30, 4, 4.30, 5 o'clock. Yep, I got my wake-up calls. Sometimes I got up, and sometimes I did <laughs> But I did manage to get up at least earlier and have time with God. Yes, yeah. And that's what it's going to take. It's going to take rearranging schedules so that we can put our minds where they need to be. Right. As long as you flip that TV on 
or you pick up that phone or iPad and you're on Facebook before you talk to God, you have a problem. That's it. That's right. That's right. If you can't control it, Jesus. you need to get off of it. Jesus. If you can't control a TV, you should own one. That's right. If it's controlling you. Yes. That's how I preach holiness. Hallelujah. I also preach it this way. You know, we got Harry Potter. We got these wonderful um, things called Wicked that they can go see at the opera. And our people are going to see this stuff. I saw, I see pictures on Facebook. I keep having to hide people. Kids dressed up like Harry Potter characters. And I'm like, really? Are y'all stupid or just plain dumb? Do you not know what you're playing with with those spirits? Do you not realize what you just opened the door to in your house? You want to know why you're having trouble with your kids? Let me tell you, you've got to stand up for some stuff. You've got to say, I'm sorry, I don't care if that is required reading for your grade. I need to go talk to your teacher. We're going to have to find something else. I did that when my kids were in that class. I think they went behind my back and read it anyway, but that's beside the point. I did go talk to the teachers. I said, no, we don't do that. Sorry. I don't care what you think. That's not happening. Not in this house. They'll not be allowed to have it in the house. And if I find it in the house, I'll burn it. And I'll come pay whatever fine I have to pay. But I will not allow it to go back. That's what we've got to do. We've got to let our mind be so captivated by God. Amen. That when anything Come walks on. in that's not right, Jesus, Jesus. we stand up and we say, oh, that's not coming in here. But since you brought it in here, yeah, we're going to have to pay a fine. Let me go find a, let me go set a fire. We're going we're gonna to burn some stuff. And then we go take it, take the ashes to the teacher and explain that she keeps sending it home. It's going to keep coming back that way. Because that's not welcome in our home. Amen. And that's what we have to do. We have to understand these things. But we haven't wanted to understand in a long time. Because if we understand them, we have to change. Yes, that's right. Right. So the sound mind. Then again, the mind of Jesus. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Yes. If Jesus could do that, why can't we? A few years ago, I was headed to a foreign country. I was going to be gone nine months in various countries. My son was in his second year at university. I had bought this bright green backpack. I took him out to eat. And I set this bright green backpack on the table when we finished eating. And I said, JT, i got to tell you something. And he said, what, Mom? I said, well, you know, I, I'm going to Israel, and I'm coming back. I'll only be in the U.S. a couple days. I'm turning right around and flying back to this other country. I said, when I change planes in the Middle East, I'm going dark. No one will know where I am. I'll call home every two weeks in a moving vehicle. You need to understand that that trip, I'll be gone two and a half months, and every two weeks you'll hear from me. It'll just be a couple of minutes because I can't afford to be tracked. I said, if this backpack surfaces without me, you're to assume I'm dead. But I settled it at an altar. And I'm okay. Because you see, I got captivated by Jesus. I want to please him. Yes. I'm not here to please people. I'm here to please Jesus. I'm here to do whatever I can to wake people up to do something for him. You see? And I'll tell you what. Standing in that middle of the Eastern airport in the middle of the night, and I deleted Facebook, and I deleted Twitter, and I deleted Instagram, and I turned my phone off, and I put it in the bottom of my backpack. And I went, well, here goes nothing, God. I've never felt God more. I didn't know how he was going to do what he was going to do. I was going to somebody I'd never met, somebody nobody knew, who could have been a mole for all I knew. I could have been walking into a trap. And believe me, that first night I thought I was as we were walking down alleys close to mosque. I had no clue. But God did his thing. Amen. God gave miracles. He gave signs. He gave wonders in those yes. two and a half months I was in that country. Amen. God did things I never, ever thought I'd see. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But you see, it was because I was sold out. It was because I let God 
take my thoughts. I let God rule my mind. It wasn't about me. I mean, standing there, I, I really wasn't that afraid. And even when I was being chased, I really wasn't that afraid because before I left, I was standing in a prayer meeting in a home, a bunch of ladies, about 30. They're always attracted to my feet. And one of them laid across my feet and started weeping. And I went, well, okay. I was flying out that night and I thought, okay, that's interesting. And then there was tongues and interpretation because I'd had a lot of fear up to that point. I'll never forget what the tongues and interpretation said. The Lord said, did you not think I would take you where I would not just provide provision for you to live, but I would provide provision for protection. Your protection is already set up. You will not be harmed this trip. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. But you see, when you're being chased, it's a different story. You know, you're the one running as fast as you can run and throwing locks on the door so they can't get in after you. It changes you a little bit. It makes your walk with God a little different. You understand all of a sudden what it means to scream Jesus and have him respond in the snap. Amen. But we don't let God captivate our thoughts. So we won't know that. We've got to let God get control of our thoughts. We've got to get our focus off of earthly things. Point nine, Philippians 3, 17 through 20. And I'm trying to move real fast. Brethren, be followers together with me and mark them which walk, so as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead, focus on the next move. Focus on the next promotion. I did that for many years. Focus on the bigger house, the nicer car. Go ahead. Like I said last night, if you don't help God clear your decks, God can clear your decks, and you'll have plenty of time to focus on Him. It's better for you to do it. It's better for you to realign. It's like, you know, it's time for me to get the oil changed in the car and go get the wheels uh, rotated. If we don't rotate things every so often, we get in a rut. And then the tires don't wear correctly. And when they don't wear correctly, you could have an accident. It's the same way as a Christian. If we don't realign every so often with God, if we don't realize we need realignment, Right. We don't realize that the tires need to be shook up a little bit, and bounced around, so that God can talk to us and move on us. Right. Then we might just lose out with God. That's right. Because we haven't allowed things to change in our world. We haven't right. allowed God to make us change. Right. We've got to be in the place where we're not shaken in our minds. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 3. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto them, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as at the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. See, it says, don't be shaken. Don't be troubled. Right. Bad things are going to happen. Right. But you've got to be able to stand there and say, okay, mm. I don't understand. Yeah. I'll never understand. I'll never understand why my husband killed himself. I'll never understand God. I was evangelizing. I was doing your work. And you let that happen to my family. You let my son find his father at the age of 19. I'll never get it, God. I'll never know why I had to take 250-some pills. I'll never comprehend the depth of depression he was in. I'll never understand why you let the cops tell me I was a person of interest and interrogate me for his murder. I'll never understand what I had to go through. But I will not change. Because, God, you didn't move. I might not understand what I'm going through, but God, you're there with me, and you're walking through this with me. Yes, you're holding my yes, hand yes. through this. You're holding me when I can't stand up, which is why I was able to dance at his memorial service, because it was the Holy Ghost that overshadowed me so that I could worship God, because my God did not move. His address did not change, yes. so I was not shaken in what I believed. Amen. No
no one could understand my worship, but my worship was not for people. It was for my king to let him know that I would worship him no matter what. Yes, amen. Isn't it time we as the church let God captivate our minds yes. so that we move like that, so that we walk like that? Amen. Then to summarize this, 1 Peter 4, we'll start verses 1 through 5. Since Jesus went through everything you're going through, and I'm reading this in the message version, version, you're going through and more. Learn to think like him. Think of your sufferings as a weaning from that old sinful habit of always expecting to get your own way. That's us. Yeah. We want it, and we want it like McDonald's say, says. We want it our way, and we want it now. We don't want it tomorrow, and it has to come the way we want it. The callings and the anointings of God do not come the way that we want them. Hallelujah. They come the way the Lord gives them to us. Right. But we've got to put ourselves in a position where we can hear from Him. Right. We've got to assume the position of prayer. Yes. It says, then you'll be able to live out your days free to pursue what God's want, though what God wants, instead of being tyrannized by what you want. That's the way it is today. Because society has set it up that you should have a certain house, and you should have a certain number of children, and you should make a certain amount of money. And if you don't make that, you're a failure. Yeah. So we're tyrannized yes. by societal norms. Yes. Right. They have no place in the house of God. Hallelujah. They have no place in a Christian's life. Yeah. If we have enough food to eat, if we have a nice place to live, we should be content. Yes. The Bible tells us to be content. Not always be striving for something, something, something. I mean, when you're working for God, I think you should strive to win more souls. You should strive in a spiritual level. Yes. But I'm talking about earthy things, not spiritual things. And then it says, you've already put your in your time in that God-ignorant way of life, partying night after night, a drunken and profligate life. Now it's time to be delicate for good. Of course your old friends don't understand why you don't join in with the old gang anymore. But you don't have to give an account to them. They're the ones who will be called on the carpet and before God himself. I don't want to be called on the carpet by God. Trust me, I get it enough. I don't want to do it because of something I didn't do or that I didn't allow him to captivate me. I didn't fall in love with him. You know, there's an old song we used to sing called I Keep Falling in Love with Jesus over and over and over and over again. It's time for the church to fall in love with Jesus. And when we yes. fall in love with Jesus, it changes us. Yes, amen. You see, through ignorance, some march to hell. They say, I don't need to know about God. But the Bible says in Acts 17, 30, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. It doesn't say he commanded the world to repent. It says he commanded all men to repent. Right. It's time for the church to find a place of repentance. Right. They continue to march to the beat of the devil's drum. Through self-righteousness, multitudes are unaware they're marching to hell. They say, I'm better than other people. The Bible says in Matthew 23, What unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Isn't it time for us to clean the inside out? We need to be sanctified. Like Joshua 3, 5 says, Sanctify yourselves today, for tomorrow the Lord will work wonders among you. But if the church doesn't sanctify itself, how's God going to do any wonders? Amen. It's, and then through private sin or through self-righteousness, multitudes are unaware because they think they're better than everybody else. So they keep marching to the beat of the devil's drum through private sins with technology and television. Many are marching to hell. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Watch that dirty movie. Watch that sexual thing that you're watching on the Internet. Interact with a woman and have an affair with her. Do you realize that when you sleep with someone not married to you? You just, if you have the Holy Ghost, you just made Jesus do that. If you have the Holy Ghost, Jesus lives in you, does he not? So if you operate and have that sin, then you just made Jesus do that. That's pretty straight. That's the Bible. That's our God. He was pretty straight. He doesn't leave any room for guessing about these things. And if you're talking about your pastor, if you're gossiping about someone, every time you do that, you just made Jesus do it. Because again, he's in you. And if he's in you and living in you, you are making him participate in your sin. It's time for us to understand what true cleansing is, what true sanctification is. It's time to be clean. 
It's time to be pure before God as much as we can be. Amen. Because my Bible tells me in Samuel that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Witchcraft is the fastest growing religion in the United States of America. A few years ago, I was tasked with World Network of Prayer. We were doing pre-prayer in the Massachusetts area. Somehow they wanted me to go pray at the Satanic Temple. Day before, they had the district superintendent of Massachusetts. He had 30 people with him. Mine had to be invited. I only had seven. I was like, okay, this is going to be interesting. This is going to get real now. And so we walked around that satanic temple. It was a place where they sell prisms and they sell oils. And this is just FYI. If you're playing with those oils, know where you get them from. Make sure you're not getting them from somebody who's in witchcraft. There's nothing wrong with them as long as you get them pure. But trust me, they're selling them in every witchcraft place. And that scares me. So know where you're getting this stuff from before you take it and you use it and you put it all over your house. It's time for us to be informed. It's time for us to know some things. Because we may unwittingly let the devil walk right in our home. And we don't even realize what we've done. Because we haven't taken the time to find out. Because so-and-so is doing it, it must be okay. Okay, so I reckon if they go to the bar, it's okay. Same difference. It's time for us to start understanding some stuff. It's time for us to be responsible Amen. for what we allow and for what we allow to touch our families. Right. Right. So I'm there and I'm walking around it with a friend of mine. We walked around it and we had poured oil and we had prayed. And at the end she goes, I'm going to lay my Bible down and pray. You pray with me. Well, she cast everything out, cast it back to hell. I mean, she did it all. And so she gets done, she turns and leaves. And God stops me and says, uh-uh, you put your Bible there. And I thought, she already did everything, God. I don't need to do anything else. He said, put your Bible there. So I put my Bible there. And this was my big fat prayer. I said, ditto to what Julie said, in Jesus' name, amen. That was my prayer. And I bent down and picked my Bible up. And I turned to walk away, and about the time I went to turn, the head of the satanic church came out of that building for the United States and started screaming at me. I didn't feel no fear. He was, I'm going to call 911, you're on private property. What well, was a business? So it's not private property. And also, if it's a temple, it's not private property. That's what I was thinking, but I wasn't saying that to him. God told me to turn, not engage, and walk away. So I started to walk away. If you want to see wonders... You've got to have a walk with God that supersedes anything else in your life. Amen. And I mean that. It wasn't that I was so great that what happened while I was walking down that street happened. But it is that my God is that great. Yeah. My God is that Thank wonderful. You, my God was protecting me. Amen. And as that man was screaming in my ear, God spoke to me and said, rebuke him in Jesus' name. So I said, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then I went back to talking in tongues under my breath. I mean, we were in the middle of a city street, 7, seven o'clock in the morning. And as I'm walking down there, the people in front of me were turned because they were worried about me. And I just motioned them to go ahead. You know, don't look back. You might turn into a pillar of salt. Just go. Just go. And he kept, and they said he went out to touch me. And right before he went out to touch me, God said to me, tell him I've already rebuked him. I didn't even know it was in the Bible. I was like, I hope I'm in the book. And I said, devil, the Lord has already rebuked you. And they said when he went to touch me, he disappeared. That took touch not mine anointing to a whole new level. I'm not great, but let me tell you something. We're getting to that day to where we need to have that much of the power of God in us at amen. all times. Yes, so that amen. if somebody tries to harm us or to harm our families, God is there with a shield. And when they touch that shield, they're gone. They can't touch us. It's going to be that simple. But it's going to take the church waking up and drawing a line in the sand and saying, I'm not doing this anymore. Amen. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to let books and education march me to hell. I have a degree. I believe in higher education. But sometimes we allow our education to stand in the way of our relationship with God because we want to analyze the Bible. The Bible is not an analytical book. It is a book of faith and of promises. Yes, it's time amen. For us to believe the book the way it's written. Yes, amen. Amen. 
2 Timothy 3, 7 says, Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And, you, and I'm saying you're marching to the beat of the devil's drum. Because you want money, bigger houses, and bigger boats, you go ahead and you march to hell. You justify things must be taken care of for you to be a good steward. That's why you miss church. It's time for us to understand those things the Lord gave you, they can disappear tomorrow. So you need to put God first. Because yes, those amen. things don't rule you, yes, but you right. rule them. Amen. And then there's witchcraft and demonic music that others are doing that they are marching to hell. They say garbage in and garbage out isn't true. But the Bible says in 1 Samuel 15, for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Go ahead, do what you want to do. Talk bad about your pastor. He tries to correct you. Amen. Just go do what you want to do. Let me tell you something. When you do that, you just open the door to let witchcraft walk into your soul. We need to start preaching it hard again. We need to start telling people what they're doing and why this is happening to them. It's time to wake up. Oh God. Hallelujah, <coughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. So why are we marching to the beat of the devil's drummers today? Is that where the church is? It's where a good many are in the church. And they don't even know it. Oh, that won't hurt me. I can watch that. I can go to that website. There's nothing wrong with that. I can go to the beach. I can read that. That won't affect me. Really? Yeah, that's how it starts. A little bit here and a little bit there. And before you know it, you've got a lascivious mind. Right. You don't even know the difference between right and wrong. That's right. That's right. The devil slips in. And this witchcraft thing, nothing wrong with white magic. Church even says that sometimes. There's good magic. There's nothing wrong with good magic. My Bible doesn't say that. I don't know about yours, but mine doesn't say that. It's time for the church to take a stand. It's time for the church to say, I'm sorry, we can't do that here. I'm sorry, we can't have any part of that. And when you stand for that, you'll start to captivate your thoughts for God. We're going to pray a prayer here in a minute. If you all stand, first we need to pray a prayer of repentance. Because we need to make sure that we're right with God first. You see... When I was growing up, I saw demons cast out. Not on a routine basis, but routine enough that you got to where it didn't really surprise you. It was part of what we believed. How long has it been since you saw some cast out? Oh God. See, the reason we don't need to cast them out in America anymore is we've medicated them. It's time for us to start having some miracles of some devils being cast out. So people can be truly free. That's why our people are so depressed. That's why they're battling with suicidal thoughts. That's why kids are cutting themselves. That's why we have all these things happening in the night. It's time for us to own up and say, you know, there's some things I haven't been doing that I need to do. There's some things I need to clean out. I've got some stuff in my house that shouldn't be there. I'll never forget the first time I preached this message. I had an elderly lady come up to me in Maryland. and She was talking to me and she said, Sister Smith, you know, I couldn't figure out why I wasn't feeling God. But after this message tonight, I know why. You preached and you told us that it was a sin to watch paranormal shows on TV, that that was witchcraft. I'm talking about a saint. Been in the church 30 or 40 years. And I thought, I wanted to beat my head on the pulpit and say, you were watching what? But you see, the world has so desensitized us to sin yes. that we don't see anything wrong with that stuff. It's time for us to clean things up. There's books we shouldn't have. There's games we shouldn't have in our homes. There's things that we shouldn't have access to because they go directly against the Word of God. If they go against the word of God, they go against God because God said, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Do we not understand how serious it is to clean this stuff up? So let's repent. Lord Jesus, tonight I beg of you, forgive me of my sins, God. Purge me with this that I may be pure. Cleanse me. Cleanse me, God. Search the dark areas of my heart. Open every door, God. Clean 
Facebook. It just appeared in my news feed and it disappeared as quickly. And they'll need some oil. And the 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 uh, prayer appeared on my news feed. I had enough time to copy it and send it to a text to someone to help me check it out and make sure it was it was gone. It wasn't something I shouldn't have hold of. And we checked it out. And since then, every time we've prayed it, there's been a move of God all around the world because it wakes all of us up to the things that we've allowed that we shouldn't have. It's not that we're horrible people. We're not. We just got caught up in our world. We just got caught up in this age that we're in with access to everything. It's time to clean up and to move out and to protect our babies and to plead the blood over our children because we want them to remain under the wings of the Most High. We don't want them backslid. We want them here. And for us to have them here, there has to be a stand taken. And I'm going to anoint the pulpit while I'm going to anoint the pulpit while you guys are praying over the north, south, east, and west. Yes, God. Okay. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I find the spirit of the wizard, all Native American witchcraft spirits, and all other territorial witchcraft spirits. I renounce and bind the false religious spirits and doctrines that were here first and brought over by our forefathers. The spirit of unforgiveness, I bind bitterness, I bind resentment, I bind anger, hate, and spite, the root of bitterness and malice, and any other hindering spirits in all the world. We bind the third eye of the media and their physical, psychic,
will never manifest or come to pass and are cursed. Just as Jesus cursed the fig tree and destroyed at their root, we render them of no effect. They are judged by God, spoiled, and put to open shame. Every plan of the enemy will never be seated into our lives and take root. No weapons formed against us will prosper. As soon as the enemy attacks, the reinforcements of the Lord will be launched against him and his sin will be dried up. We cast down every vain imagination. It's broken off in ministry, its people, and families immediately, completely, and permanently. Open those doors. I merit back every curse sent against God's people up to and including death. We also shine our light into their darkness. I lose faith, positive thoughts, hunger for God. I lose miracles. I lose signs. I lose wonders in Jesus' name. I lose the five-fold ministry to operate in the church. I lose free flowing anointing in the church. I lose the saints to be submitted to leadership, finding true freedom and submission. I lose myself from preconceived ideas to operate in the flow of the Holy Ghost. Revive, renew, and awaken us who have been affected, discouraged, and given up. We call those to resurrection restoration and life to get back to their post in the area of calling in Jesus name. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Devil leave in Jesus name right now. You leave their homes. You leave everything about them. You don't be in their children's minds anymore. We find you in Jesus name. We find witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. We find The altar is open if you want to come to the altar and pray. If there's something you need to take care of with God, now is the time to take care of it. This entire sanctuary has become an altar. We pray to the North Lord. We pray to the South. We pray to the East and we pray to the West. We take the dominion and authority. The dominion and authority that you have given us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, my God. 